Hi, I'm Tarria, and you're watching Loudwire. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's Joe from Loudwire and it's Wikipedia Fact or Fiction time. And this one's this has been a hard one to get. We've got Tarja hey. here with us. Thank you so much hey. for coming in. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, of course. So we're here to spill the dirt. Yes. Maybe. We'll see. I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> so I went through the Wikipedia page, your uh -huh. Wikipedia page, all your solo albums, mm -hmm. the Nightwish album. Wow. So we're going to find out what actually happened okay. and, uh, and what's uh, what I've been doing. Some lies. <laughs> So, easy one for you. Mm -hmm. Tarja Swole Susanna Turinen Kabuli, born yes. August 17th, 1977. Correct. All right, we're off I to a good start. I have a really long name, gee. <laughs> and it says you were born in a small village of Pujos near Kitty, Finland. You have an older brother, Timo, and a younger brother, Tony. Your mother, Ritvasisko Marjata Hakarainen, worked in the town administration, and your father, Teovo Turinen, is a carpenter. Wow, it's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they did, yes. <laughs> so, was yeah. your dad always building things around the house, furniture? Well, actually, my like dad, that? as a carpenter, we always lived uh, in a house he built. And we were always in the same area, sort of. Um, first, I was born in a very tiny little village that at that time had like 500 inhabitants. Mm -hmm. Now, probably 300. So, it's like a, it's ah, getting smaller. a country girl. <laughs> but the Kite. It's a city nowadays. At the time, it was a village, but now it's a city. But still, like eight, maybe nine thousand people live there. Small. So it's very <laughs> small. So. They all know who you are now. Yeah, right? they all. Yeah, <laughs> they do. <laughs> they do. <laughs> and said your music teacher, Plamen Dimov, explained if you gave Tarja just one note, she immediately got it. With the others, you'd have to practice three, four, or five times. And at school, oh, you had a tough time since some girls bullied you because they envied your voice. Well, the bullying thing is actually is very true. I don't know, but the rest, I don't know. If it was really like one note, then yeah, I made a, a, I made a song out of the number one note. <laughs> but you stood out. No, but yeah, it was like that. Music was my, actually, because of all the bullying and all that stuff. I was, I was bullied for, for like five years at least. So music was my escape, actually. Now, pre-Nightwish, the band was supposed to be acoustic mood music. Yeah. instead of oh. heavy metal. Yeah. And it says, um, Tom, Thomas Halepainen later explained that the band members had gradually realized that your voice had become too dramatic for acoustic mm -hmm. mood music mm -hmm. and eventually came to the conclusion that the music had to be massive too. Hence, mm -hmm. Halepainen decided to form Nightwish as a metal band. Yes, to support my bigger voice. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, me being living in that little tiny village, everybody knew already that I was having the voice to sing. And so I was always participating in many events and uh, I was the girl who sang mm -hmm. okay so then when the time took me out the musical studies and all that high school of music conservator university of music I was 18 when Thomas came with a demo on my door and asked me to sing on the first Nightwish demo that was acoustic mm -hmm. he did not know that I had already been studying lyrical singing and my voice had become bigger and mm -hmm. uh, powerful so it was a surprise in the studio that really it was born like the idea of combining these operatic vocals with the heavy metal background so obviously uh, now you were a metal fan yeah. even during this yeah. time so yeah, it was just natural for you guys yeah. to switch to metal yeah i was not a metal fan that was no. the thing okay i never thought in my whole life becoming a heavy metal singer no mm -hmm. But it just happened because I took the challenge like something I felt the music was super beautiful. I felt I was capable of doing that. And since ever I've been a little child, I've been always eager to jump into challenges. And Nightwish was like that for me. Mm -hmm. It was like a, hey, let's see what's what's gonna happen. And mm -hmm. whoa, <laughs> Thing, things just happened and my life got mm -hmm. changed completely. So what did you think about metal before Nightwish started? Metallica was my metal. I mean, I, I was listening hard rock, that kind of things like uh, White Snake, Alice Cooper, um, mm -hmm. Scorpions, Scorpions, all that kind of uh, melodic uh, yeah. bands. But um, metal was Metallica for me. It was, I was not aware of the genre until mm -hmm. I became a heavy metal singer <laughs> in a heavy metal band. And, and the whole scene opened up for me and it was uh, incredible. The, I found so much beauty in it. So it says you enrolled in 2000 at a German music university. You're gonna have to help me out here. 
Karlsruhe, you are Hochschule for Musik. <laughs> All right, did it better than I can. <laughs> <laughs> to gain a professional qualification as a soloist with further specialization in art song. In addition to the good reputation of the university, you chose to go there because some of the people at Finnish University did not take you seriously as a classical singer due to your commitment in a metal band. I wanted just some fresh air. That's all. My, my singing teachers, all the teachers, they knew me going on tour all the time. They saw me doing that. I came back to my studies. I, I was doing my studies. Everything was great. And they were supporting me, actually. There were so many kids coming to see a concert in churches or theaters or me singing with the symphonic orchestras or purely classical music that they have never even, some of them, walked into the church before. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's like I was breaking the, or starting to break those, those boundaries, boundaries, the walls down. Mm. You explained that in the early days of Nightwish, it was difficult to combine classical technique with the metal sound in a way that gave you liberty of action without damaging your vocal cords. Classical techniques helped you play with your voice, so you decided not to pursue extra training in rock slash pop singing. Yeah, I've never asked help from any other type of singing teacher or professional. Instead, I've been always progressing as a lyrical singer, still today. Mm -hmm. I have a vocal coach in Buenos Aires in Argentina. Whenever I feel like I really, now I'm getting to a wrong track or something, which is rarely happening anymore. I know my instrument very, <coughs> very well, but, but you need a guidance. You need a guidance, and uh, especially in the line of singing that I'm doing. No, what was the issue with potentially damaging your vocal <coughs> cords the way that you were singing with Nightwish? In the beginning, you know, um, the sound the bad sound, bad monitor mix, you know, hearing with the veggies, the voice, it's not like the... You so have you tried the, to overcorrect for... Yeah, the mix. of course, you mm -hmm. know, uh, you cannot hear, you have the pff, drums blasting full on on your ears and you cannot hear what you're singing and not to, to over push, you know, that means pushing means damage, it's mm -hmm. like that. And for a lyrical singer, everything happens here, actually, nothing happens too much here. And to get away from the lyrical singing technique, just to take a step aside, that was tough. But I did that on my own. Uh, I didn't want to sound like I had a potato in my mouth all the time when I was singing. So, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Nobody could really understand what the heck I was singing. So, uh -huh. so I did not want to sing like a classical singer in, my, in the rock show. <laughs> <So> <laughs> I had to find a way, and it was tough. It took me years. So going into a little bit of Nightwish here, Angels Fall First. Tuomo Salopainen wrote the music for the album during his time in the Finnish army. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I believe so, yeah. So does Finland have a mandatory military service? Yes, okay. yes. And even women uh, can go. I, mm -hmm. I think for women it's not mandatory, but for men, yes. So was this kind of a little bit of his outlet during his time I in there? I think so, I guess yeah. so, yeah. <laughs> On Wishmaster, the song The Kinslayer is written about the victims of the Columbine High School Massacre. Right, that's correct. What was the impact of that event in Finland? Uh, yeah, that was kind of like the first things, really like uh, that kind of sort of things that started to happen after, afterwards. It's been uh, fortunately, terrible, a lot more frequent today. Terrible. But um, yeah, it was kind of, uh, and especially I think for Tuomas, he had been um, as an exchange student in USA and he had a US connection a lot more than the rest of us uh, in a band. So for him, it was a, like a bigger impact. And on Once, the album cost nearly 250,000 euros to make, which made it Finland's most expensive recording ever. Um, and then this one, uh, may not know here until the release of uh, Dark Passion Play, which uh, cost over 500,000 euros. I but have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. But it was an expensive album. Oh, yeah. It, that, yeah, there were some, some, even some video productions were like ridiculous. On it. And uh, one more regarding once. On January 5th, 2013, a member of the Nightwish Forum discovered the alleged Lakota language spoken in the song Creek Mary's Blood is not actually Lakota, only spoken gibberish, and stated that John Two Hawks is a fraud, John Two Hawks being the man who recorded those vocals. Eh? That is weird. Might be right. I have no idea. This is the first time you're, hear, you're yeah. hearing about this? Yes. <laughs> oh, gee. What? 
for Colors in the Dark. Uh, the name of the album, as the cover image, came as a metaphor from the idea that life has a large range of colors and the dark absorbs all of them, containing every color. Yes. So like my baby girl. Well, she's not a baby anymore. She's six years old. And They'll always be babies, right? Yeah, always my baby. Yeah. So she, one day, we were talking about colors, and uh, she's like, my favorite color is black. I said, oh, and why is that? Because mommy's favorite color is black, even though I'm not wearing any black. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> And why your favorite color is black? Because it, it absorbs all the rest of the colors. And I'm like, it's exactly <laughs> like that. It's exactly like that. <laughs>